Alright, lesson 5.2, graphing linear inequalities in two variables. When graphing a linear inequality, what we're going to use is we're going to use a, a dotted line when we are graphing a less than or greater than signs. Alright, so we'll use a hash kind of line like so. And when we are dealing with uh, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to when we're graphing, I want you guys to use a solid line like so. Alright, the steps to graph a linear inequality. Step one. What I'd like you to do is graph the line in the coordinate grid using what you would have learned from last year on y equals mx plus b. So if we remember that m is our slope, and slope is represented as rise over run. Hopefully you remember what b is. And b is your y-intercept. Okay. So normally when you graph, you start with your y-intercept. That'll be some point on the y-axis, of course. And then from there, you apply your slope. Now the other note that I've written right here is make sure that you identify if a dotted line or a solid line is required. So that's just by looking at the inequality. Next thing you need to do, number two says choose a test point that is not on the line. I suggest always picking zero, zero unless it is uh, on the line. So I'll kind of clarify what that means. That test point is going to help us figure out where we shade. Step three says substitute the test point into the original equation. If it satisfies the inequality shade on the side of the line where the test point is, if it does not satisfy the inequality um, shade on the other side. Okay, this says equality should be inequality. Okay, example one. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to put it into y equals mx plus b. So in order to do that, we're basically just trying to isolate for y. So do that first. I'll just write down the original question. And I'm going to try to isolate for y. So I'm going to move the x the other side. So if I subtract x from both sides, I now have negative 3y is greater than or equal to, uh, I'm actually, I'll write the x first. So I'll have negative x plus 6. Okay, and that'll make it easier to put into y equals mx plus b. Now from here, we have to um, get rid of the negative 3. So I'm going to divide by a negative 3. All right. And when you divide by a negative 3, I'll just make a little highlight here. The sign switches. Okay, the inequality sign switches. So whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, you need to remember that the inequality sign is going to switch. If you don't, we're going to have some problems. So we end up getting y is now less than or equal to negative x divided by negative 3. That just gives you x over 3. And then 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. So now this is in y equals mx plus b. We are ready to go ahead and graph this. Okay. So graphing this, we start with my y-intercept. It's at negative 2 like so. And I'm going to now apply my slope from that point. So I'm going to go up one unit, over three units. Up one unit, over three. Up one, over three, like so. And if you want to go backwards, you can do the same thing. You can go over three, down one. Over three, down one. Over three, down one. And then from there, you can um, sketch in what we have. Now, of course, you notice that I'm using a dotted line because we have a less than sign. Now what I'm trying to figure out is, do I want to shade above or below my test point? So the test point that I want you guys to normally pick is 0, 0, unless the line goes right through 0, 0. I find that makes it a little bit complicated. So um, pick something that's clearly off the line. For this one, 0, 0 works. So I'll just make note of that. So my test point is 0, 0. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here, I'll do this in blue. I'm going to go ahead and test uh, my equation. So I'm going to put 0, 0 into my original equation. So my original equation right here, I had x minus 3y is greater than 6. If I put 0, 0 and I get 0 minus 3 times 0 is greater than 6, this gives me 0 is greater than 6. Now is that a true statement or a false statement? Well, since 0 is not greater than 6, I would say that this is false. So since it's false, you would have recalled in the steps, I said, you shade the true side, all right? So since this side, when I put my point right there, it was false, I need to shade on the other side. That means everywhere down below this region, I would shade in. That would be my solution region. And so what that means is if you picked any one of these ordered pairs, let's say that ordered pair, that ordered pair, that ordered pair, anywhere in there, that would satisfy my inequality, which is the whole goal. All right, let's go to the next page. Example two. Now I've given you some right here where we're going to have to go backwards. I've given you the inequality, I've given you the sketch, and you have to go and try to figure out uh, what the equation is for this thing. 
So the first thing we start out with is we don't worry at all about uh, which inequality we pick. We just want to get it into y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to write that right down here. We have y equals mx plus b. So let's try to figure out my y-intercept and my slope. My y-intercept is at negative 3. So right now I have y is equal to a certain amount of x's minus 3. We now need to figure out what my slope is. All right? And so my slope here. Um, I'm going to assume this graph isn't perfect, but I'm going to assume it goes through that point right there. So the graph, I look, I go up 1, 2, 3, over 2. So my graph is 3 over 2, like so. Okay. Now from here, you need to decide which inequality we're going to use. Well, since I see we have a solid line, I know that I'm either dealing with greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. It's one of those two. Now, what I would suggest you guys doing is just pick one and see if it makes sense. So notice how um, this side over here is shaded. I'm just going to arbitrarily go and guess, and I'm going to pick that, let's say, y is greater than or equal to 3 over 2x minus 3. Okay. So now since, let's say, 0, 0 is in the solution region, if I find that you substitute 0, 0 and it's true, then I know that I've picked the right inequality. If I pick 0, 0 and it's false, then I pick the wrong inequality. So let's see here. We would have 0 is greater than or equal to, this would just turn into 0 minus 3, or 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3. Well, that's a true statement. So then I would shade where the test point is. Since it's already shaded up here, I know that I have picked the right inequality and that that is the solution for that one. Okay. You might want to try the next one on your own, uh, pause the video, and then see if you get the same solution. For this one, I get y is equal to mx plus p. We always start there. Look at what your y-intercept is and what your slope is. For this one, I have a y-intercept of 2. And I have a slope of, it looks like it's going down to the right, so that means it must be negative. It's going down 1 over 4, so I'll write this as y is equal to, equal to uh, negative x over 4, or 1 quarter x, whichever way you want to write it. Uh, for this one, I don't know. We know that the graph is going to be less than or greater than. Okay, It's really up to you which one you want to pick to start. I'm going to pick y is, let's go, I don't know, less than negative x over 4 plus 2. Okay, And let's see what happens. So again, 0, 0 um, is down here. If I find out that when I substitute 0, 0 and it's true, then I pick the right inequality. If I pick 0, 0 and it's false, I need to switch my inequality. So let's see what happens. I have 0 is less than 0 plus 2. Is 0 less than 2? Yes, it is. So therefore, you would shade down here. That's where it is shaded. So that means that the inequality that I picked is good to go. Last example, example 3, we have a word problem. OK, everybody's favorite. Carmen has up to $15 to buy seeds. A package of vegetables, uh, vegetable seeds costs $1.50, and a package of flower seeds costs $2. What they want you to do is write an inequality to represent the total cost of the seeds. All right, so if we see that, um, let's say, vegetable seeds cost $1.50, and we have flower seeds. So those are like our two variables. We're trying to basically determine how many of those are we going to buy. First thing we need to start out with is a let statement. So I'm going to go with let v equal the number of vegetable seeds, and f is going to be equal to the number of flower seeds. Okay. So if I know it costs $1.50 for a vegetable seed, I can write 1.5v, and it says it costs $2 for a flower seed, so that's going to be 2f. And they say I have up to $15 to spend, so that means I must have less than or equal to 15, like so. Okay, so that's our first equation. But one other thing that I want you to include on here is that we have some other constraints. And the constraints, if you think about them, remember we have a real world problem. Could you go and buy negative seeds? No. All right, so we know that we can say also v must be greater than or equal to zero. You could purchase no seeds, but you couldn't pay picture, or sorry, purchase, let's say, negative two seeds. Same for the flower, so that both those have to be greater than or equal to zero. All right. So that means right away here that it makes no sense for me to have anything in these two regions right here. So basically, I'm only going to be working in the first quadrant. All right. So keep that in mind. Next thing is just like we were doing before. I want you to go and take this, and I want you to solve for um, one of the variables. Now, normally we'd be solving for y. I'm going to arbitrarily go and label these ones. I'll make the x-axis we'll call f, and the y-axis is going to be v. So 
We normally isolate for y, this time I'm going to isolate for v. So we have 1.5 v plus 2f is less than or equal to 15. To isolate for v right here, I'm going to move the 2f to the other side of the equation. So now I have 1.5 v is less than or equal to negative 2f plus 15. Now we'll divide both sides by 1.5. We divide by 1.5 here, we get v is less than or equal to, now I went and changed this into a fraction. When you change it into a fraction, it becomes negative 4 thirds f plus 10, like so. Okay. So now we have enough information to go ahead and sketch our graph on here. So we have a y-intercept at 10, and we know that the graph is going to go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and run 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, run, 1, 2, 3. And since you can't fit another point on, I would suggest just going down into this black region here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, just so you can draw yourself a nice straight line. Since the inequality has an equals to under it, you can make it solid like so. And so we would get something that looks like that. All right. So now we need to figure out where are we going to be shading. Are we going to be shading above or below? So again, I would pick a test point. My test point I'm going to pick is 0, 0. So I'll just write that, a little note for you. Test point that I picked was 0, 0. If you substitute 0, 0 in, let's see what happens. So I would have, uh, putting this into my original equation, I would have, so the original equation I'm talking about, so you understand, is this one right here. You would have 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 15, or 0 is less than or equal to 15. Since that is true, you shade where 0, 0 is. So that means I'm going to shade everything below that line everything below that little line is going to be a possible a possible amount of seeds that we could purchase. Okay, and that's where the next question says. It says, use the graph to determine two possible ways Carmen can uh, get seeds. Well, let's see. Let's pick a couple here. She could, of course, go and buy nothing. She could buy no seeds. She could buy, let's say, this one right here. So that means she's getting two flower packages and one, two, three, four, five, six. Vegetable ones, we have two and six. Let's get another one. Uh, how about this one right here? She can go by one, two, three, four, five flowers and two vegetables. And the list goes on. Anything in that region would satisfy it. All right, D asks, can Carmen buy five packages of vegetable seeds and four packages of flower seeds? So let's go take a look at the graph right here. And I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see. So five vegetables would be one, two, three, four, five, and four flower, one, two, three, four. So very close, right? They're talking about that little tiny point right there. And so since that point lies outside, I would say that, no, she could not. All right, she would not have enough money. And I believe if you, um, if you do the math and actually put in those solutions, you will get $15.50 it would cost her. So my answer here would be, nope, it will not happen. The last question says, what is the most money Carmen can spend and still have change from $15? Well, if we take a look at it, there are a number that she could have. Um, for instance, if she picks this order pair at 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Notice that's very close to the line. That'd be a good one to pick. All right. Uh, another one would be right here. You notice how they're all the same distance from the line. Those two, the one at 2, 7, and the one at, uh, what would that be, at 5, 3. All right, 2, 7, and 5, 3. We'll end up, when you put those into your uh, calculator, you end up getting $14.50, all right? And so the interesting thing about that is you notice how they were exact same distance from the line, yet they were still in that shaded region. Um, so that leads you to believe that those would be the ones that would um, get you to spend the most amount of money, but also still have some uh, change left. Okay. So that concludes this lesson. Uh, the big thing is uh, understanding uh, first, how to put things into y equals mx plus b. The second thing, understanding how to use a test point and figuring out if you shade above or below.